one thing that's worth thinking about is when you're starting to get closer to the finished product, um, you might want to clean your hands, okay? And this is also a bad time to get a cut because blood, blood on it is, doesn't look good. You can't really wash it off. You have to carve it away and it means your spoon gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So now I'm going to start hollowing it out um, and I'm going to use a spoon knife. There's a bent blade and uh, these are Ben Orford spoon knives. I reckon these are the best ones. Um, they're a bit thinner than the Svante Diavi ones, which are also good, um, but I think these are particularly good. And one of the things that Ben does is he has a slightly shallower curve and very smooth curve, um, which means you can get a better finish, I reckon. Um, you don't get so many kind of teeth marks in. So I'm gonna use a right-handed one first. I've got right-handed and left-handed one. I'll show you how to use both. Right-handed, you wanna go across the grain, okay? You don't wanna go with the grain. Going with the grain means that it will follow the grain and it's got less control over it. So I'm just gonna come straight across the grain using that same grip, but with my thumb out of the way. Don't do it so you go into your thumb, okay? And I'll start hollowing out. Just going straight across. And you want to, I'm not, uh, you, want, you want to keep it even from the start, really. But you can see this is leaving a nice finish. Although, having said that, there are a few little scratch marks in it. And that's because uh, I've not sharpened this one. So maybe we can show you that on the next video. But um, you'll see, I don't know whether you can catch those little scratches going across there. They're from tiny little chips in the blade where I've probably not stropped it enough before use. Um, so though, that's a little pet hate of mine. Um, and it, it's a, another reason to really look after uh, the tool and, and use it properly um, because it saves time in the long run. So um, now you can see I'm coming back. And actually if this was a clock, Instead of just working across, like I was doing then, you can work back from 12 till 9. And you can also do 12 till 3. That kind of circular motion. And you can also do 6 to 9. And you could go back from 6 to 3. Okay, so... What about 3 to 6? 3 to 6 doesn't work, because you're going up the grain. So oh, right, yeah. it leaves... You can hopefully see the rougher finish there. See that finish there? Whereas, oh, where is it? So yeah, working that way leaves quite a rough finish. Yeah. Whereas if I work that the other way, hope, hopefully you can see that smoother. Probably. You might not be able oh, to, yeah. but trust me, it definitely is a, yeah. a, on my life. Yeah. So, uh, the left-handed one, what you can do is that same grip that we are doing before. So you can work from the back oh, right, and yeah. come forward, which obviously with this one, with the right-handed one, the blade's on the wrong side. Yeah. Okay, so you can't do that with the right-handed one. One of the things that uh, people tend to do when they're starting out is not to know when to stop, and you can keep on going and going and going until you've broken all the way through. You need to make sure it's thin enough to be comfortable. Um, Would you test it in your mouth? Yeah, or you can hold it up to the light. You may well be able to see light through that, can you? Right, right through it, eh? Yeah. Ooh. Where's the sun? You see a little bit of light coming through? Oh, that's difficult on the camera, I think. But yeah. yeah. I remember just, uh, you could try just eating a little bit of it. Can you? Like, yeah. In your mouth. That feels pretty feels comfortable good. to me. Yeah. You just don't want it to fill your mouth up, do you? With no. Mmm. <laughs> that tastes quite nice as well. Ivy's got a good flavour to it. One thing that we're not going to do right now is you can actually leave it for a, a day or so to dry out and do a few finishing cuts when it's a bit drier. Um, but if you want, you can just tidy up this edge a little bit, just with a tiny little knife, and just take take the fine edge off. Okay, so just little cuts, just on the outside. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, that that's definitely a functioning spoon, and, uh, you know, you could... Uh, Spend a couple more hours tidying it all up, but uh, I'm I'm relatively pleased with, with with how this has worked out. And what would you say the advantages of a wooden spoon over a spoon that you get from the shop? Well, certainly, um, you know, for starters, that that's carbon, so um, you know you're not 
you're not releasing carbon into the atmosphere, you're taking it out of the atmosphere. The tree's done that for you. Now you've got a solid bit of carbon with you. Yeah. Um, it feels nice. Um, and I think, you know, it connects you to nature, basically. It connects you to something that was living rather than um, something cold and pressed out in a mass-produced factory the other side of the world. Yeah. Um, and it feels good to eat off it, doesn't it? Especially out, oh, of, a, definitely, out yeah. of a wooden bowl. Yeah, exactly. We'll, yeah. we'll come to later. Yeah. yeah. Sweet as. Brilliant. Bit of a bit of wooden spoon, isn't it? Yeah, thank you, Barney. No worries. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so Barney, place a place a tune with your spoon. Oh, okay. I think Ooh. I missed the high C then, but it was all right. <laughs> 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 yeah, spoons. <laughs>